12 paying that much money? That's the usual question surrounding the Power Watch models and the second generation is more expensive but also more complete than ever. Is it finally a true smartwatch? Let's try it out! Welcome Tech for All YouTube channel, it's Michael speaking and wow, almost a year later I have the chance to again wear a smartwatch that doesn't need any charging. Well, right now outside there are the perfect conditions for the power watch to serve me well because if the weather is cold, the watch generates more power. Yeah, this is still the only watch which can create energy by consuming your body heat. And since I usually talk about pricing and highlighting the closest competitors as a start, let's respect this tradition. There are three editions, the regular $499, the premium for $599 and the deluxe for $699, which sounds like crazy a lot of money for just a watch, so we really need to get impressed by it. Because for that money, you can order the Garmin Phoenix 6X with a sapphire glass or a few premium G-Shock devices by Casio or the new Suunto 7 with Wear OS, which is one of the most premium and advanced devices of that kind. The price is indeed considerably higher than the predecessors, but we have to admit that Matrix, the company designing it, is one of the very few companies that plays fair and maintains the pricing exactly as they've promised during the crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, because yes, this is how the story of Power Watch has begun. Could be that you don't care about such things, but to me it means a lot and definitely makes me confident in the business model of Matrix. Short disclaimer from my side, I've never been approached by someone from Matrix and got the uni thanks to Constantine, a new friend who was kind enough to let me try it for a few days and helped a lot with his experience for creating this review. And true, this material is unbiased as it can be and I'll do my best to give you a good idea of what wearing the Power Watch 2 feels like. As a starter, the unboxing, which Constantine was so insistent to be shown, and yeah, it was well worth it. Quite premium feeling and touch, awesome box and inside, the even more awesome Power Watch 2. The premium edition, which delivers the right kind of enjoyment, so far well matching the price tag, you know. To my surprise, besides the papers included and the bands, there was a charging dock, which was kind of weird for a watch which is supposed to charge itself, because the whole point of having the power watch is the company's slogan, never charge again, but turns out that in some specific situations this might be necessary. Let's first comment on the obvious, 47mm dial, and this time it is not as rugged and dangerous as the power watch X. A few months back I've tested it and it was tearing sleeves so easily, it was cannibalizing almost any sort of fabric it got in touch with. The material now is more polished, feels better, colored, transflective 102 inch screen and yes it is visible all the time except in nights. The brighter it is outside, the better visibility on the screen and it has a backlight. GPS, water resistance, calorie counter, solar charging, only part of the many features. The heart of the watch is the Ambic Micro Ultra Low Power Consuming CPU, which if you check some benchmarks about, gonna find out that it's more battery savvy than any similar ARM based processor. The most essential hardware part is of course the Gemini Thermoelectric Generator. Terminology may get quite complex here, but the thing is that it uses our body heat, captured by the plate at the bottom, and by colliding it with the coldness that the watch body has collected, it produces very small quantities of power that maintain the constant power supply and store it into a small battery inside the watch. This is the same technology used by NASA to power the Voyager spacecraft and the Mars rover. It is based on the sea back effect discovered back in 1821. If you dig more into the documentation, you're gonna figure out that this tech works very well in areas with colder climate. If it's too hot, the amount of generated power is insignificant, but this is where the solar cell can help, because yeah, the Power Watch 2 has a solar cell as a plan B for getting some charge. Apparently the provided dock is plan C. I always admire innovation and despite the attempts of some people to neglect the success and the grade of innovation of Matrix and the Power Watch series in general, here we are two years later with the watch that charges itself when you wear it, tracks your vitals and even has a GPS. So now it's time to take a look at the software part. The screen is not touch, so we have these four buttons to control. We can also refer to the user guide for help. Up, down, select and back. 
Yeah, the lack of touchscreen is not great for a device to sell in 2020, but if the button navigation is well implemented, you get the needed functions. Garmin Fenix series also don't have a touchscreen, and no one is concerned about that. Thing is that while the buttons are fine, and once you get used to make sense, the software needs a lot of polishing. Like, really a lot. I hope to see things significantly improved from the PowerWatch X, but that doesn't seem to be the case yet. Basic functions like infinite scroll, because otherwise you use up and down presses like crazy, and the menus, they're somehow weird, not intuitive enough. The other thing worth mentioning, the older generations seem to not get any further firmware updates. Feels like as soon as Matrix release a new PowerWatch model, they abandon the previous generations. Would be really nice to see some continuous support, and that pays off in time. And I very much hope that the faith of the software development around PowerWatch 2 will be different and better this time. Even got a firmware update during the testing period, and that brought another annoyance. I had to restart the update twice until it worked. So yeah, there still are some bugs and some areas of improvement. On the other side, some good words about the smartphone app. Well, we're still waiting for better watch faces, better sports integration and so on, and because of the goal to be energy efficient, the GPS integration is still quite conservative. Also, you have data about the generated power, but no actual data about the battery consumption. But there is good integration with sports apps like Strava, for instance. The user guide recommends avoiding the usage of the GPS for more than 30 minutes per day in order to prolong the battery life. But it's there, and it works well, and can draw the track you've used while running, which is more than enough at this stage. We have available most of the regular features for a feature watch these days. Sleep tracking, heart rate tracking, and this is all visible from the app. It was pretty easy to pair the phone with a smartwatch, and the data is now synchronized considerably quicker than what it used to be with the previous generation. Obviously, the precision of heart rate and the sleeping is way off what devices like the Galaxy Watch and the Huawei Watch GT series offer. But now the PowerWatch 2 can almost be called a smartwatch because it supports notifications. In fact, has a cool option for notification queue. Features a bunch of sports, vibration, backlight, heart rate and sleep tracking. And Matrix are proudly comparing it to the Phoenix 5, even to some Wear OS devices. We have to be fair, the software side is not as spectacular as the hardware. But the second generation is a huge step forward. And if only it was a little more affordable, I was about to love it. Speaking of price, right now the PowerWatch X and the first PowerWatch ever are cheaper and they're around 100 bucks. So maybe soon enough we're going to see the second generation becoming more affordable. One year later, I still believe Matrix are designing awesome watches and it is worth supporting such kind of innovation because if the battery on your smartwatch goes down, it won't track anything anyways and the PowerWatch 2 simply keeps on working. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please support the channel by using the links to the product posted in the description below. And hey, tell me, is the Power Watch finally good enough adding a color screen and a GPS? Or we should ask and wait for more? Can't wait to see your responses and what you actually think. And let's catch up in the comments below or in the next episode. Cheers!